welcome to my garage at the house. Uh, I'm gonna do this vlog style because I forgot the tripod at, uh, at OGHQ, but I'm gonna show you the install. This is our second install of the lift. It's from Top Shelf Solutions. We are a retailer for it now, so go to obsessedgarage.com. You can pick it up there, but I'm gonna just kind of handhold and capture uh, Mike and I installing this thing. Uh, but this is the bike lift solution, which I I'm telling you, I don't get this excited about too many new products. Uh, this thing is amazing. I, I know that some people don't get it, they don't understand it. Kind of like people don't understand Swiss tracks and how the dirt goes under it. I, I love this thing. I think it's absolutely fantastic. So here's how it works. You have you know, basically a piece of Unistrut that they have modified with some holes in it, specific holes. Uh, you will show you how you kind of put the T's in order to, to take away the deflection. You have the control unit or the motor, the uh, pulley system side of there. You use your own bike rack and the bike rack slides into the trolley. So we're going to mount it right there in this little cove, this little cutout space. I considered doing it over there in that spot next to the window. I think this is the perfect spot for it. Dead space otherwise. Yeah, I mean, what else am I going to do with that spot? Put in, I put in closets because they did the goofy off-centered stairs there. Really, didn't really have much of a choice. And so, you know, we could have put it on this wall here. But I think that back there, out of the way, you never drop it on a car is the way to go. So, the nice thing about this garage is we have uh, 11 and a half foot ceilings. I think it's 11.4. Uh, and so we can get these bikes way up in the air out of the way. So let's do it. Let's get an overall line. Right. So, so what is this whole length anyway? Ten foot plate that piece. This one is. So this is well. You know what, man? It's, it's too big. Floor to ceiling anyway. Not quite, because I was I was ten foot four, so this is a foot taller. Oh, yeah, that's why this is not ten foot. Right. Yeah, this is eight eight foot two. Yeah, yeah, it's ten feet total. So Got it. And and so we can hit the stem wall here. Yeah, and hit it, or and we can still, we still. can either hit the stem wall, or we can do the bottom plate. Yeah. So. And and get it, you know, get as much height as possible out yeah, of it. So the bottom the stem walls. 18 inches. So if we do that, if we go to the bottom plate here, which is where that's a that's a member. Yeah. And screw there, and then go as high as we can. Yep. Cool. Crap. Do we have tap cons for this? Uh, we don't need tap cons. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. They so they supply these. this. They come yep. with these, so they've got a little taper like a conical so there that yes. centers the strut. Because we learned that if you, you know, if it pokes out the trolley, the bearings hit the... Hit that, right. So we can't use... Remember, we, when we first did this, we didn't... We missed the fact that they had drilled holes between the slots. Mm -hmm. So we got washers and went between the... Went through the slot and then it was sticking out about the right. 16th and the trolley bearings would come down and whack it. Yep. So this this prevents that. So, so all this stuff comes with it. Yep. Yeah, they got it all laid out. So we got all spring nuts. All our parts. It even comes with a bit for oh, this man. to drive them in. Nice. And their instructions are really good too. Yeah, they're nice. We don't really need them, but it's yeah. so simple. Yeah, it's pretty simple. All right, so what do we mount first? So I think the first thing we do is mount the T to the strut, to make a T out of it with that, that piece we have there and the shorter piece down below. And then we put the coupling, or there's a splice plate that mounts the head unit to the eight foot piece of strut. So we'll Got get it. that all mounted up. So last time we put it all together and then put it on the wall. Isn't gonna be, do. Isn't, don't you think it's be easier to not put it together and uh -huh. or do you have to? Not really, because the head has to go wet high and I mean, wouldn't it be I easier mean, to I guess we could. Wouldn't we'll it be easier what, to mount this? I think mount. Yeah. So if we mount the T to the unit, which is what we I was just about to do. Yeah. Mount make a T out of it. And then we could mount the head unit only and then splice it later. The splice plate goes Let's see. Yeah, is it on the back side? Is that why we have to? Uh, no, it's not. It's on the front. And right, so couldn't we like do this in sections so it's not so darn heavy trying to hold it up there? We sure could. Because it's not going to the floor this time around. Right. So yeah. We, don't have that well, we put it on top of the baseboard in the last house, mm -hmm. which at least mm -hmm. held it there. This time it's going to be floating. Yeah. But it is recommended that you do it from the floor up, but we're, we do everything. Yeah, I don't see any reason record. why we can't. So I'm just going through the steps of what they have you doing here now. 
I don't see why we couldn't. The only thing is, is, is we getting it plumb? Because what we do is we mount it, put get it all put together, and then we put a level against the the eight foot unistrut, and that's how we get it plumb. Well, what I'm saying is, you put the eight foot in first. Yeah, and then rest right? it on top. And that's then it's easier to yeah, mount it. it. We're not holding up a hundred pounds in the no. air. Well, it'll just save us the weight of this the eight foot strut. Well, let's do that then. That's fine with me. So it's a little. T style spring nut. Yep. So you put the spring nut in the strut, and then this little T bracket makes it a T. Yeah, the bracket that makes it a T. Two more bolts. So I'd say we just ran this sucker up against the ceiling. Yeah, as close as we can get. We can go all the way almost to the top plate. Man, I make all these videos. I really use some lights in here, you know. I'll get the lights in after. After we're all done. Um, yeah, I got no more videos to make. So we need to mount this top of this strut, 24 and a quarter or so, minimum below the top of the. Yeah, those holes are for the pin to locking pin. Yep. The side holes. Yep. All right, so I'm gonna set the camera down and we're gonna mount this thing, and I'll show you what it's, what it's done. So this is what we're talking about here with these. You gotta have the right kind of screws so they sit in that pocket. So now the way that this is working out for us, we can use the footer here, or yeah. the, the, the stem wall. Yeah. Throw some Capcoms in there. And it should be solid as Sears. Yeah, give us. You can't use that term anymore since Sears went in Locked in. Gosh, if I would've known we were gonna do, we could've done this a month ago. Right. Take us an hour to put this thing well, in. Well, because we, we were talking about centering it, and there was no sudden center, but then yeah. I got here, and I'm like, you know, why not just offset it just a little bit? Save us all that work. Not the heavy part. So anytime you turn that on, you want to put tension on it so it doesn't slack up. Inside. Yeah, get all bound up inside, unwound. I'm gonna find out if our method is the right way to do it or not. Yeah, we're waiting a little bit here. Only one way to find out. Give it a shot. So this is the joiner piece that joins the strut from the motor unit to the strut on the wall that we mounted. Because last time we did this, we just hoisted it up there and yeah. tilted it on the wall. And I just think that would have been too hard to get it in the position and level, especially as we were, we were also hit a block wall before. Now we were hitting a stud. Yeah. So I think this might be the smart way to do it. Mounted with the uh, mounted with the bracket here, and then we're gonna put some screws up in the top. So I haven't opened one of these up yet. We're gonna take the cover off. We could very easily just zip tie the wires, but we're gonna see what it looks like in here. If we can 
easily access the content access the contacts, then we can just shorten, shorten the cables up to exactly what we need. We learned from the last house that no one's going to let us take this with us, you know? It's a custom install to stay in anyway. It's one of those things, it's like, you could, you could say, look, that's not included, but they're going to say, well, no deal then. Yeah. You know, when you, when you t teach people all this stuff. They didn't know they wanted it until they saw it. Yeah. Yeah. Same with everybody watching this video. So we can just take this cover off and see what's in there. See how feasible it is to shorten that. I imagine it's going to be pretty easy to do. So there's the inside of the unit. Gosh, can't wait to get lights in here. So we're going to take that black cover off. We're always modifying, Mike. Always, always. modifying. Nothing's ever good enough. No. That's what people get mad at me about. Tweak it all. So let's get the capacitor. And a terminal strip, which our incoming power is right here. It's interesting that that it's a nine, It makes sense. Roll, the rollers feasibly. It's bigger. narrower because the motor runs, you know, huh. longitudinally. Interesting. Yeah. I'll mock up our length here without totally plugging it in, even shocked. Basically what we did was we just spliced, the, the uh, neutral was already spliced and so we just re-spliced it, shortened up the cord, re-spliced the neutral, which is this blue and a green, re-spliced the ground and then did the same thing to the hot lead. This is, before anybody says anything, this is really low current so this isn't going to matter. It's just butt splices are fine in this situation so um, rather than trying to cut the terminal loose and just shove the wire into there. This is a better method anyway, so, and simple. So we'll try to see what we can do to shorten the uh, pendant cable. We'll, we'll look down on the pendant for first and see if that's, uh, if that's easy to do there. It might just be a series of little contacts in there. We can shorten it there. If not, we'll come back up here and shorten the pendant as well. Things still plugged in up there. Mm -hmm. well, it looks like. Yeah. We can shorten it here. See, it's yeah. just contact, contact, and there's wire into screw terminal. And then this one, we can just re-splice it. So we'll just shorten it here. Once you figure out where we want to put it. Yep. So we're going to test fit it before we mount our control unit. What's that? Talking to the people, Mike. Always talking to the people. So we're going to put this the, the trolley on here and then decide where to put the, the controller. This, this doesn't go there. There's another pin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't think that through. This is why you follow directions. Mm. And drop it down inside of there and we're screwed. this off, lower it all the way down, lower the cable down and pull it back up. I think this is where a lot of people follow instructions. They have boring people follow instructions. Right? We don't want to do that. out of that unit started. Yeah. So they're working on building a bike rack that you could use on your car and on your on your, your lift system but I'm gonna use more we're gonna use my one up because you gotta put, you put my one up there somewhere anyway. It works out great when you can store it on your lift system. 
kills two birds with one stone. Really, really cool. Okay, so just you know, lift it up like this and put it on a 90. And then I don't have the, yeah, it's not, that's, I don't have that truck pin, just uh, to the right in front here, right here. And this is the ball bearing. Yeah. Just like that. I can't wait for them to come out with a, uh, a, a service stand oh, yeah, for this lift too. Okay. Then pull the blue handle. Sorry, I'm holding the camera here while. Well. Nice time. I'm going to pull the blue handle up. So, just pull on it. Yep. There we go. Now we go, yeah, flat, flat like that. Up. Right there. Oh, because one's elevated higher than the other. Yep. Okay. And then push these little buttons here. Flip the rings. Yeah. Which buttons? I don't see them. Right here. Oh, I see them. And then lift up on the that thingy. Yep. Oh shoot! It was right, it was just close. We <laughs> is uh, we got a couple inches of spare on the left side. Fully open. Those will those will collapse into the bike. Anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. So which bike do you want to put on first? Um, Yours should be the showcase. Can you show the bike first. Yeah, we'll put the white one on first, I guess. Need my cameraman back. Pretty good. Huh? You can go a little higher. Where am I at? Oh shoot. That's fine. We can put a, put a stop on it. That's fine. Yeah. We never open the morning. Either. Yep. Yeah, we'll put a stop on that. Yep. Nice. And they're out of the way. Sweet. So now we gotta figure out where you want to put the pen. Any bikes, really? Yeah, doing a double thingy, like doing the little basket. You could, if you didn't mind having you know in the middle of your wall. But how does that work, though? So the basket comes down. It would need to go all the way to the floor. You'd have to and take the other one, one off. Stacks up on top of it. Yeah, yeah. Generally, you would put the bikes lower, and you would put the basket up higher. Mm -hmm. Then you know you want the bikes up out of the way. I all think right. this is idea. Yeah, yeah. I I'd, I'd just do a single. If you were doing like four canoes or something, that might work. Yeah. Doing a double basket. So we're gonna set our stop right here. So we went all the way up to the ceiling. So now we set this little square pin, this little square piece here that doesn't allow it to go any higher. So what I decided to do, mainly for aesthetics, is because the bikes are offset to the left, I can walk around. I think we did it the other way, didn't we? Uh, do we go forward? Oh, the yeah, 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 yeah. It has to go forward. It has to go forward because the clip. Yeah. And so it's just so we can run the power cord down the unistrut. We're going to mount it right there and then... So we're going to shorten the cord up, mount it there, and then I'll walk behind the bike rack, stick my arm in there. That's the way I like it. Well, you can get your whole body here because the bikes are out here. Yep. Yeah. Shoot, I almost want to buy a bike rack and cut the, cut the arm short so I can tuck it all the way up against the wall. It might hit the uh, motor up there. Well, we can see how much clearance there is when we get it all back together. Yeah. 
put a couple anchors in to hold our our bracket that holds the control unit. Now we have to keep in mind as we do this that the power cord is going to go up and up the top, up and around. So before we cut it, we'll put the cover back on. We'll put the cover back on, then we'll wrap the power cord around or the control cord. So we're going to use these little guys. Some uh, 3M little squares. A piece of pads, and zip tie goes through it, right up against the side of the strut. So if you didn't bring the wire down the side here, that's when it gets goofy. You gotta like run it in the middle of the wall. I guess you could cut the wall and run it through it if you really wanted to get crazy, but I think it's better to just reach behind. like it when you're using these uh these strippers Mike. I know I heard they were supposedly Sonic doesn't make okay strippers. Yeah those aren't very good. Yeah. It's funny the wire looks stripped. <laughs> <laughs> oh they make some good ones. I like Thomas Betts and those are Klein's but those are good. They're fine. They do the job and they're not dull and they cut nicely. I think they don't like the style, you know, because yeah, it's the multi-tool. Okay. Well, these are, these are great. These are actually for more for electronics. That's what they're for. They're not for like Romex. Because yeah. you got your crimpers. You can you can cut off screws, see? Yeah. Metrics on this one. But and then you got your strippers, both European and gauge, standard gauge. So I don't know, I like them. So you got your little contact block. So it's no uh, no crimp on the end of this. It's just screw in the clamp type terminal. Just replace one for one. Oh boy! Here comes the storm. You got some crankies or some happies or uh, mediums? Kate doesn't want to go to swim. Look at that cutie. I feel like they get pictures like 10 times a yeah, year. Yeah, they do. It's a little ridiculous. Star of the show is here. Can I get an update? Oh, no. okay. She's got some long hair. She had it braided today, so it's curly. That's it, piece of cake, match up the colors. Nice and short. Shorter. Shorter. Proper length for custom application. So there's your lift install. Nice and clean. Shorten the power cords, get rid of all that extra fluff, all that extra length, and then we got our control unit here. I'll show you how we. I'll show you how it works here in a second. Let me get the bikes loaded up and get them off the floor. All right. So see what I'm saying? You walk around. You got plenty of room to walk around the back here and go up. Oh, we have to turn the breaker back on. Oh yeah. Off to control. <laughs> The rack install. See why I like to have that controller there, even though you got to reach around. But you really don't. I mean, it's almost shoulder width. Yeah. I mean, you almost stand this way. Yep. But look how much room he's got. Yeah. He's got like a foot and a half. Yep. Even even with the the lowest part. So cool. All right. So that's a wrap on the lift. This is the 400 pound version. Uh, go to obsessgarage.com. All the pricing. I don't know what I don't know what it costs right now. The pricing and everything seems to change every second of every day. And plus this video will live for over a long time online. And we also have a 200 pound version, which is a little bit less. 
I'd suggest, you know, I guess you can get away if you're doing light bikes like mine, you could get away with doing a, a lighter, you know, the lighter version. But I'd say it looks pretty darn good. And when you look at sort of the overall feel of my garage and sort of how it tucks into there, it uh, really kind of completes the setup here. Gets the, uh, gets the stuff up, up in the corner, out of the way. It'll look even better when I get some lights. We'll have to make sure we appropriately position the lights as we install them. So that's a wrap on the lift. I'm glad we decided to just offset it a little bit and put it on the stud. Save us a half a day of extra drywall work, but I think uh, I think it's something you want in your garage. I can't, can't stress to you enough. It sort of transforms your experience of storing bikes that can be such a cumbersome thing in the garage. So. Go to obsessedgarage.com. We have them on the site, all the information you need. There's some other videos available as well that are better done than this one. We'll see you soon.